Hello. Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Anne Rumbina, um, a writer and broadcaster. I live here in the UK and uh, I'm the moderator of this. I'm thinking we're alive on air, so I'm going to start again. <laughs> Apologies, guys. I was waiting for some uh, music to start this great um, enterprise, and I didn't hear any. So, um, But the show must go on, and that is the mark of COVID-19. So apologies for that. I'm Anna Rambima. I'm a broadcaster and writer, not a very good broadcaster and writer at the moment. But um, yeah, this is the um, fifth uh, webinar of the Europe Jazz Network. And uh, we're going to be talking about what's coming out of COVID-19. And this one is entitled, Everything Must Change. So, well, will everything change? Or will at some point we just all go back to the way we were? Or has everything changed and we need to adapt to what's going to come on in the future? We're going to be discussing that over the next hour. Um, uh, how have the events of the last three months impacted live music and our offer to audiences. Um, there's been something which uh, someone has termed the tsunami of streaming. So will this tidal wave continue? Will it develop and change? How will we ensure that the human connection that we get from live music carries on and the joy that we get from live music carries on if we are going to have more and more streaming in the future? To discuss this, I'm joined by four people. They are Christoph Huber from Austria, Ellen Schoenartz from Belgium, Nathan Newman, who is from the UK, where I am, and Karine Zuber in Switzerland. Unfortunately, uh, Reza Akbar Ali in France, who works for Quest TV, hasn't been able to join us. He may possibly later, but uh, we're going to work without him. So I'm going to ask all of you to just give us a brief introduction to yourselves. Very, very brief, please. Just tell us who you are, where you live, what you do. Uh, if I could start with you, Christoph. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Christoph Huber. I'm uh, the artistic director of Porgy and Bess, the jazz club uh, in Vienna. Uh, I was co-founder of this club in 1993. Uh, I grew up in Salfelden, was part of the jazz festival Salfelden before. And till now I'm the program director of this wonderful place in Vienna which we're going to be hearing all about because exciting, exciting things are happening. The future has already arrived in Vienna. Uh, but Ellen, please tell us a little bit about you. Yes, I am Ellen Schoenert. I am a musician from Belgium. And uh, because of the crisis, I was supposed to uh, uh, release an album, which which I didn't because yeah. of the COVID crisis. And then I met some people during a hackathon and we, we created a, an online platform uh, artists Unlimited to do live streams, but where artists can uh, gain some revenue from. So we wanted to empower artists. That was the idea. Great. And I'm sure you have. Thank you very much, Alan. Nathan, you're um, uh, from a slightly different world, I feel. So please tell us about what it is you do. Yes, I'm the odd one out. <laughs> uh, so my name is Nathan Newman, and um, I'm from the UK. And uh, my background for the last 15 years has been a mixture of media, marketing, and technology. And um, at present, I'm the co-founder and strategy director of Social Broadcasting Company, which is a company that combines creative technologists with people who understand marketing to deliver virtual events. So you're going to tell us how we can make money from the future. Thank you very much, Nathan. And last but not least, Kareem. 
Can't hear you though. You I'm can't hear me? Can now. To unmute. Yes, I can hear you. Now no, it's you, okay. You're fine. You, we can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so my name is Karin Zuber. I live in Zurich, uh, where I'm director of the Club Moods. It's a kind of porgy and best of Zurich, or porgy is the moods of uh, Vienna. <laughs> and uh, we do concerts every day, usually during the year, except in the summer. And we have also our streaming platform. It's a subscription-based platform since 2017. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Very neat. Right. So I have to say, as, um, as a jazz fan, and being at home for the last three months. I have tuned in to a lot of streaming, but quite a lot of it has been artists playing on their own at home, sometimes of not great quality. And I love jazz because I love the high level of musicianship. And I haven't always got that from the streaming that has been everywhere. But I think if I come to you, Christoph, first, if we could ask, if I could ask about you started, you decided right at the start of uh, coronavirus and us being shut down that you were going to have high quality music. And how did you, and high quality production values, how did you go about that? And why did you decide to do that? Yeah, I mean, the shutdown was around, I don't know exactly, 13th of March. And we thought about uh, how we how we can react on this very bad situation. Yeah, because I mean, you have to close the club and and you have to cancel all concerts and things like that. And then, you know, the idea the, the first idea, of course, was also uh, live streaming and uh, doing something out of the archive or something we already have had done or or we have cooperation with mezzo tv and things like that so we had a couple of i mean like, uh, quite a lot of uh, video material we could have uh, uh used for that but we, we we said okay we we don't think that this really makes a lot of sense so we switched to a different idea to engage musicians also because it was possible to do that to engage musicians playing in the club playing on stage and doing a live streaming kind of thing and we call that the show must go online and we programmed on our homepage you know we we, we had a, 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 a button called pay as you wish so the people they were just joining the, the stream is principal the stream was free but we asked them just to donate money because it's necessary to pay for that. And the only thing which was for us really very important was to keep the quality because we didn't want to, we didn't want to do that on Facebook. We didn't want to do that with private cameras or, 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 or handies or whatever. Uh, and we had a cooperation and that was super perfect with the Academy of uh, uh, Fine Arts in Vienna. And this was the media uh, department of this academy. And there was a close friend of mine, Friedemann Monteer Schmidt, with whom I did a couple of very interesting projects in the past. And, you know, we are, we are filming the con or we, we, we film the concerts with six cameras. It, it, it is high definition. It's really on, and, and there is someone taking care about live uh, uh, uh sound taking care about the pictures things like that and you know the thing is it the people had the impression that the concerts were happening because it was real time it was not you know when you when you miss the beginning at 8 30 then you know it's done you i mean you can join but after the concert the stream is over yeah and what we recognized that there is a community uh, a jazz community or something we created in the past 25 27 years that the people you know that they really miss that and they miss this kind of uh, club situation but they got it back in their living room and you know they were 
they, they, a couple of people just said, okay, well, I put a beamer on and, and, and I was sitting in the second row in the club and I was enjoying it. I mean, my, uh, I, I, it was not the guy who is normally sitting uh, near me. It was my wife, or whatever, you know, and it was just, it was just a thing where I said, okay, you know, the people recognized that we take care about their needs yeah? and we took care about the needs of the musician because when the first streaming was on the 4th of April and it was a concert with the fantastic uh, uh, duo with, with uh, uh, the sisters uh, uh, Wiesinger, Beate and Astrid Wiesinger, it was bass and saxophone and, th and they, they also said okay well no job since three weeks in this case yeah? and 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 now it's fantastic just to be on stage again although it was a very spooky situation in the club because it was just like you know six cameras <laughs> but uh finally uh, two days ago in in austria i mean the, the thing was we we decided that because of the fact that the government announced that it is not allowed till end of august to uh, realize concerts so we cancelled everything as everyone cancelled everything till end of August. I'm, uh, can I just interrupt briefly, course, very sure. briefly, <laughs> Christoph? Um, how did you, because I know you're going to tell us the exciting news that um, of what happened on Saturday, but did you manage to make money from, you said yeah. pay as you will. Did people pay? Where yeah. did they come from? And yeah. then maybe tell us the exciting news yeah. that happened on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. I will tell you about that. And you have to interrupt me because you know, <laughs> otherwise I want the will not stop. So now uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the people. I mean, that was really that was something we didn't we, we cannot foresee. Yeah? If the people pay for that, and but we thought that, that was also the reason why we said okay, we don't want to do that from our archive. Because we thought, well, then no one is really interested in that. Because when you just tell them, okay, you can see that and it's already done and you can watch that tomorrow or whatever, you know, whenever you want, the people are, you know, they are not that excited about, you know, just to check that out. And, and in this case, it was clear, okay, it's live, live, and it's, it's people, it's musician, musician on stage uh, in the moment. And and we were really, I mean, in the beginning, the you know the donation was was really, you know, it was high. I mean, we speak about like two thousand five hundred euro uh, per concert. Yeah. I mean, of course, after a while, it went down, but it's it's now it's it's a bit under one thousand euro. Yeah, still, I mean, it's a high level. And, and the Brilliant. people donate, and the people donate. And to be honest, to know, I mean, we have statistics, yeah, and we know that people are. It, it, it also it depends. We have people from the Near East, for example, when there is a concert of you know musician from Iran living in Vienna, yeah, because they you know they they also have a kind of a community, and they they just you know they just inform them. When we have, you know, we, we got, for example, we did a solo concert of Peter Herbert, a, a, a bass player. Yeah? And solo concert is not like the pop music fraction in the jazz. Yeah? And, and, you know, people like Mark Dresser or uh, David Tronsos or friends, musician friends. Yeah? And they checked it out in New York. It was three in the afternoon. And even, even his, his brother or, or his, you know, the, the family of his brother in Tokyo, and in Tokyo, it was like, I don't know, four in the morning. Yeah. And they just, you know, they donate. Yeah. And they just sent money and said, okay, super cool that we are doing that. Yeah. And, but I also think that it was really necessary to do that on a very, very high level. And, and we couldn't afford that without this kind of cooperation. Yeah. Because, you know, even the 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 the, the, the Austrian uh, broadcasting company ORF, yeah, they I mean they do the live streams right now. But okay, I mean, I'm going I'm going to interrupt again, Christoph, because you're I'm so excited. <laughs> you're excited. I know why you're excited. Is because on Saturday, um, uh, Austria Austria is so much further ahead than we are here in yeah. London. Yeah. Um, for various different reasons, but in terms of coronavirus. Uh, you are you 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 were allowed to have a hundred people. Someone's pouring some water. You were allowed to have a hundred people in your club 
on Saturday. Yeah. And my goodness, what happened? Tell us. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was it was you know as I mentioned we we uh, did a kind uh, I mean we planned this series called uh, the show must go online this streaming series and then you know we got the possibility to let people in and we did that immediately and the first concert and it was already planned like uh, a month ago yeah uh, it was Wolfgang Mutspiel let's say the maybe the most international Austrian musician right now and he was playing solo and he's, he doesn't play solo uh, a lot yeah? and and the last time he played solo at the Porgy was in 1994 yeah and so it was a long time ago and that was a very important concert for him he mentioned that and so you know and this was a kind of let's say solidarity he did it yeah and he said and and you know I asked him like when it was clear, when, it, when the government announced that it's possible to let people in, I asked him and I said, okay, well, you know, is it okay with you? And he said, yes, sure, it's super. And I will practice more than right now. Yeah, just, you know, just to be fit on this on this day. And, and, and then, you know, we opened the club and we sold 100 tickets, which was allowed. It was like a, a social distancing of one meter in between the tables. It was a, a strange kind of, of, of feeling on the one side. But you know what happened? I went on stage and before I even could say a word, they, the people, they, they just freaked out. They were applauding and they were just, you know, it was so like, you know, emotionally wise. I mean, a thing where I said, wow, we didn't really know this kind of importance for those people. I mean, it was just 100. But also, you know, we were in the in the in the in the main news, TV news, and and that's something which is not happening every day. I mean, it never happened before. <laughs> and you know, it was it was just fantastic. It was like you know, then you really know, you know, the worth of your work. Yeah, because yeah. you know, yeah. you just get. Uh, a feedback and also this kind of solidarity not only with this concert but also before the people you know we we in the beginning we said to them okay we pay back the money yeah if you want that but if you want to help it's better if you just accept vouchers and you know what the people did they i i don't know like let's say 75 percent they just said okay give us vouchers yeah so vouchers is not like a, i mean but in this case we don't have a problem with liquidity yeah because we hadn't, we, it, it was not necessary to pay the, the, the money back. Yeah. I you mean, the money, is not, the money is not, I mean, they, they, will, they will use the vouchers. Yeah? But, you know, that was a great signal. And a Christoph, lot of you've, people, Christoph you, you've made us all very happy as we imagine human beings gathered together enjoying music. We're all looking forward to that. Absolutely. I, absolutely. I will ask you more about how you did the live concert and the streaming a bit later, but let's, yeah, let's yeah, hear from sure. some of the others first. Because, Ellen, tell us about what's happened to you during coronavirus. And I saw you smiling. You were thinking, oh, well, I wish I could Yeah, they're playing, they're playing. They're playing. I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, so you I have, you're in Belgium and you haven't been able to. So what have you been doing? Yeah, so I was supposed to uh, to to release an album, so but I didn't, of course. And then I was in a hackathon. It's a some kind of something out of tech, tech, the tech industry, where uh, people were thinking about all the problems we have uh, on the COVID. And I I was together with this. I I met uh, all different kind of people, um, mus musicians and music lovers in this hackathon. It was a hackathon of one weekend, where and this is you build like this solution, a technical solution for a problem. And as I, as we were with uh, musicians and music lovers, we thought about the problem um, of the of the musicians, of course. So we uh, we decided to 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 make a prototype of a platform where uh, we should um, we, because we saw that all the musicians were streaming, but they were doing it for like free. And we thought, okay, this is a bit, a bit stupid because if everybody is going to do everything for free. Uh, making music, it, it costs money. Making an album, it costs money. So we thought, okay, how can we help the musicians um, by making these streaming things, um, um, ma making an income out of this uh, streaming thing? 
So first we thought, okay, so we built up this prototype of a platform, which is uh, which uh, should um, empower the artists so that they, they, they can stream, but they can ask money for it. And then we thought, okay, uh, after the weekends, well, we thought, okay, maybe we should do like a festival to see if people are uh, willing to pay money to stream because you should not build a platform for artists to make money if people are not willing to pay uh, money, of course. So we did first we did this festival. We had ten artists, and uh, we we also we we thought about the production because we also thought it was really important that it would be like for the first time that it would be like a a nice quality of sounds, a nice quality of uh, video, that kind of things. So we also, we, part, uh, we partnered with uh, Video House and CK Productions. They did the production part in, uh, but like, yeah. And then we sold, then we went live on uh, the 26th of April and we sold 2000 tickets, which was really, really nice. And people out of 40 countries were watching. And it was really a big success for the artists because they had a, a really nice feeling with it. They had they gained money, of course. That's really nice too. For that, for us, it was like a success. And then um, also we we saw that not that also people who normally wouldn't go to concerts or not, or are not able to go to concerts, like uh, people who are, who are disabled, but also people who cannot afford to go like to this festival. They, they watched it and they were like really, really, really enthusiastic. The musicians were really enthusiastic. The, 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 the audience was really enthusiastic because also of the sound and, and because, it was, because it was really, really good, really good artists too. So that was a success. We thought it was a, a great success. We were really happy with it. And then also we, we, we said to the people that they could donate so that the, the, the Artist Unlimited um, team could develop the pl platform later on so that they could, even when the COVID is uh, past, 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 that the artists could have a platform where they, where they can do the live streamings and that, that it could be like some kind of extra revenue model on top of their concerts, because we don't believe that you can, you can um, how do you say it? You can um, replace the concerts, but we do think that you can add an extra reven revenue model on the concerts and make artists, um, um, put artists in a, in, a, in, a, in a closer contact to their fans. That was the idea. And so now, is it me this? Uh, okay, oh, no. So now a, a great part of the team is, is building the platform um, further on. So in June, they will uh, allow artists, I think it's June, they will allow artists so they can, they can start doing streamings. That's the first. And then in, in, in for the rest of the summer, they will do uh, events so yeah that's a bit the story of this artist unlimited it's, it, it 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 was an idea of an hackathon one weekend and all of a sudden it, it 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 got out of hand and we we did this festival and it was really 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 nice and now this there's a, a really nice team who is really enthusiastic about the idea and they are going further with the whole idea and the whole platform and the idea is to make a platform that is like non-profit on the other, on one hand but it has to be sustainable of course you cannot yeah, yeah. it has to be sustainable okay. for everybody who's, who's for the team who is working on it so they are looking yeah. into how they will um build it further they are on it okay great so making money for artists is absolutely essential obviously and that yeah. involved a lot of work but I don't know if that's going to be possible in the future. Nathan, I mean, um, you work with creative technology. I'm sure your phone has been ringing a lot as people have wanted to be creative with their technology. Um, and, and maybe also you can give us some idea of how people can make money out of such things. Can you give us some ideas of what has worked during the last three months and what you've seen and what, you, what we might start to imagine? Yeah, so I think um, what's interesting is that we're in this um, moment that uh, Scott Cohen, who's the chief innovation officer of Warner Music Group, referred to as the Napster moment for live events. So essentially, you know, we have a theme today of everything must change, and I think that everything has changed. Um, we are going to see these transitions back to, you know, physical events, but the whole idea of, you know, what it is to be a broadcaster has changed as well. And a lot of what we're seeing out in the social media networks kind of reminds me of the early days of social media where there's a lot of 
experimentation um, taking place. So that there is this mass behavior change, and that is going to have an impact on what it means to have a live event and how hybrid live events can start to work their way into this space, um, which um, Ellen kind of um, touched on a little bit uh, just before. So just to, to give you some some highlights and, and snapshots, um, in uh, the last 10 years in the world of e-commerce, there's been about 1% um, year-on-year growth in terms of um, sales revenue. And in the space of eight weeks, that growth has increased to 11%, which essentially means that people are buying online. Um, people are expressing their identities by what they consume online, and that level of consumption has accelerated across the board, no matter which um, sector or industry that that you're in. So with some of our work, we've been um, looking at you know, how to put on creative broadcasts and how to do things that are anything but um, death by Zoom, as we refer to it as, uh, which is kind of the, the new death by PowerPoint in, in our view. Um, we've seen behind the curtain of a lot of different um, events and a lot of different strategies that we've implemented for clients. So I can't, um, I can't put metrics alongside client names, but I can generalize a little bit. So in the last um, two months, we've put on 55 shows and releases across Bandcamp, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, Vimeo, and Facebook Live. And those campaigns have hit 21 countries and have achieved um, 529,000 video views in total and a marketing reach of 3.4 million and achieved revenue that's been in the tens of thousands um, as an as a, um, aggregate number across everything that we've been doing. So it's really been quite, a, quite an interesting time. There's been a lot of change in the marketplace, a lot of behaviors that have changed and um, the opportunities to monetize artists' work most certainly exist in the marketplace. It's just a case of artists thinking about how to express themselves in these mediums that represent live entertainment and live events, and thinking about, more importantly, how to play to the medium. So in this time of social disconnection and, and chaos and disruption, how can you create that intimate connection that you might get from a, a physical live event? Um, Interestingly, if we, if we go back to um, Christoph's experience with his physical event, um, there was 100 tickets sold for the physical event, but the opportunity there could have been to layer in a hybrid approach where maybe that event was live streamed and there was a live streaming pass that people could pick up internationally as well. So you could kind of use the idea of um, this socially connected thing that's happening somewhere in the world, and that would be, you know, it was local news or um, national news in Austria, but that's something that... Um, could have been found, you know, and, and, and multiplied um, through the internet to, to interest and effect. And um, it's just really interesting for, from my point of view to just see how much disruption is out there and how many people um, are trying to, to do new things. And what I really see working across the board um, are the likes of paid media campaigns on social networks. Um, because there is that increased engagement and people are spending more than people are more engaged. So I've seen, you know, unit sales from $1 a piece up to $60 a piece, um, depending on the audience that, that's being targeted. Um, and what is absolutely working is looking at how to not just be creative with your music, but with your content and looking at ways in which you can explore emotional depth while there is that lack of social disconnection and being able to really play to that. So that expresses itself in lots of different ways. And I think a really good example was um, an artist called Jacob Collier, who was on Jules Holland um, here in the UK. I think it was uh, last weekend. And um, he did a, a creative broadcast that was pre-recorded, but it went out live where, um, I, I don't know if anybody watching might have uh, seen it, but it, it's certainly worth looking up. It's, um, it's on YouTube if, you, if you'd like to take a look. Um, but that's an example of a, a young artist that um, is certainly trying to break some new boundaries using existing technology just in creative ways. Um, just briefly, Nathan, I wonder if you could tell us what he did that was exceptional. I, I didn't miss it, but I did miss it. But th that show has been had some really good ideas in it. What did Jacob do? And then we'll come to Karim. Um, so he played each instrument and captured himself playing each instrument and then brought in, uh, brought in a, a vocalist. Um, but he did a, a split screen um, of him playing every instrument at once. Um, that is something that could be done live with a little bit of tweaking. Um, but it was just this idea of him playing every instrument and visually building up 
this um, creative music video using the the medium of live streaming or sorry that i should probably say the visual language of what it's like to perform on zoom rather than live streaming um that's more what what he played into okay great we'll all go and find that on youtube thank you very much nathan so kareem um you've been you've had streaming for quite some time in your club for a particular reason which you'll tell us about so how has yeah just tell us and and what what it's been like during the shutdown yeah, the, the idea why we did that is first there was an opportunity that we did a big renovation in 2016. And so we thought that it's time to equip Mood to make that possible, that just the concert is not completely over after a concert, that it can stay something uh, more sustainable, not only for the customer, but also for the artist, that he can have a long-term additional revenue. And so we wanted to create our own uh, platform with a broadcasted show where we make available live, but also on demand, also to build an archive and then to do a subscription based platform, of course, uh, uh, inspired by Netflix system or systems like this. And with the, with the very fair revenue share that 70% of the income are going to the artists. Uh, which was super optimistic and there is some income coming going to the artists so um, it was great it's a super great experience but we completely under underestimated the huge work at, in the administration the production uh, the marketing which it's, is needed so actually after two and a half years uh, you know two years uh, we were kind of slowing down the amount of uh, streamings that broadcast we did because financially it was getting difficult but it doesn't mean that it doesn't work and it doesn't interest people it just does mean that it would need a huge more resources to make a good marketing of it so we're thinking about shall we keep the platform or do something else of course as everybody said it um it makes the community stronger. It brings mood out of the borders because finally 50% of our customers are not from Switzerland. They're from all over the world, more European of course, but from everywhere. Um, we observed that people were before Corona more watching on demand videos and repeating than really watching live. It was not so important before Corona to watch it live on social media because we always uh, also streamed for free some excerpt at the beginning, live. At the beginning of the show, we had kind of 15 minutes live. They love that because it's also a possibility to do comments and to share it and these community things. But it was financially not enough to, to we, we didn't know how, where to go. We we're really asking us a lot of questions before the crisis. And then the crisis arrived and we thought, okay, it's a chance to make it really work. So we, we didn't stream live at the beginning because here in Switzerland at the beginning, it was really strong, stay home, stay home, stay home. So Mood was not home. So, and we also had some uh, infected people in the technician crew. So we made a break, but we pushed the on-demand offer with the, um, the key message, uh, support musician, uh, more than 500 uh, great concerts available. And we teased the uh, guitar fans, the jazz fans, world music fans. It's more jazz, but then we teased country per country. We started with Italy and Spain because of the lockdown there, and then we followed the corona crisis with the lockdown, with boosting and with YouTube and Facebook online uh, advertising. And uh, so now what we saw is we kind of tripled the revenues uh, per mo in March, April, and May only double, and it's going down now. So I don't know, I what I saw also, we tripled the income, but the amount of views were not so higher than before. So it was like, okay, let's support musicians, let's watch a little bit. But I'm not sure it's a behavior that we can count on for the future. Let's see. But uh, we have to continue, we have to focus, we have to find other strategies and try things. Uh, now I have the, the feeling that people are a bit tired of watching a screen 
And if it's going to relax everywhere, people want to go out, want to see real music, want to see real musician. Let's see, it's too early to, to analyze, but for sure we will continue with the platform one more year. Uh, if this model is the right one, it's too early to say it. It, it takes a long time uh, to really get a strong uh, income uh, on a streaming platform. It's like on Spotify too or on other platforms. Also, Netflix is not safe now economically. And we are small. So let's see. Maybe we join forces with others, like, for example, Quest TV. Quest TV, uh, Reza should be part of the, of the panel today too. For example, this is a only on-demand uh, platform and um, it's supported by Quincy Jones and he has a mix of documentaries and broadcasts of jazz from all over the world, also black music. And he has a kind of same observation that we made, but he's trying to now integrate Quest TV on other platform, maybe on channel TVs, maybe on, with partners, okay. sponsorship, and so on. He's also trying new ways to make it feasible financially. I uh, think we, let's we see. Need maybe we have all to join forces, but this is a bit early, I think, now. But a lot of people are yeah. doing things like his stuff. And one day, maybe we all join our, our super archive together. Ah, and I one we, thing, we started with a live now. And if now in the corona, people like to watch it live, of course. But we do on our platform and on Facebook and on Instagram, for example, yesterday. And uh, we propose everything. The best quality is our homepage, but people prefer Facebook because they can exchange and share and put comments and they have a feeling that they have a, an attachment because they can be active. That's so, Karine, I think. Um, we, I think we'll we'll move into talking about what the future looks like. Um, but we have a quick question to you from uh, yes. Maria Rylanda. And she says, uh, did people subscribe? How much did it cost? And do you think people are ready to pay for a show or a subscription? I think you answered, you answered that yeah. to some extent. You think people were supporting, were supporting you? Yeah, so we have, you can choose a seven day subscription or a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription. So people who are very close to the club, they usually take a yearly because they know moods and they know our programs, they trust us and whatever. Now, we had in the past, we had a lot of seven day subscription because they just wanted to see one artist. But what happened is, for example, they took a subscription, you could see because of Bill Frizzell, but then in the next week, they watched other guitar players like Julian Lage and whatever. And we had not so many monthly, this is special. But now that Corona came, we have a lot of monthly. And a week costs like, uh, I have to make the change in euro, it costs like almost six euros. A uh, week, I uh, know this is a week, a month like 15, and a year like 150, something like that. I have okay. the price in Swiss francs in my mind, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Thank, thank you for that. So um, I, I wonder if these things, as, as, as circumstances change, are they already starting to change in Austria, or as we maybe get a vaccine, who knows? or at least a treatment for coronavirus, or, we, or people start to go out more and mingle more. Will all of this stay with us, this experience that we've had? So, Christoph, um, I think Nathan referred to it, but your of your live event, you also streamed it at the same time, didn't you? Yeah. So yeah. can you tell us what that experience was like and whether you think that will carry on into, into the future? I mean... Basically, it's the same problem as Karine also mentioned. Is the the, the costs of the of people taking care about that? But of course, we uh, we try. No, we will do that uh, also in September or the next kind of the next the next month. Yeah? Because it, it's 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 an important new window we found. Or for us, we just you know it it just happened for us that it works and it's possible. And I mean, it's like, you know, in the, in the 80s, they said uh, video killed the radio star, yeah? yeah, which was not true, as you never. know. <laughs> yeah? So the, the live concerts will never, you know, no. that, that will always be, the people will come to the live concerts because always. it's live. Yeah? But the people who are not in Vienna or who cannot attend a concert, 
they are really happy when they have this kind of opportunity. Yeah. And I think, you know, to do that parallel, yeah, to do the concert and to live stream it. Yeah? But live stream really like like the concert. Yeah. So it's yeah. not on demand. It's not on, uh, you know, it's just in the moment. And the people, they, you know, they have to, uh, as they go to a, to a concert, they have to be in time where they have to, you know, to look at that, to listen to that, whatever. And that's the point we are, we are thinking about. I mean, we have now a couple of, um, now we have, what is now, now is uh, begin, now end of, Ma end of May. Okay, <laughs> end of May, sorry. <laughs> uh, we, we, we have time till 1st of September. And from that on, we will do that, like, uh, because we cannot afford, like, six cameras, also because of the space itself. I mean, the six cameras, they, you know, the people cannot watch, or, or a couple of people cannot watch the, the, the musicians on stage because, you know, that's it. So we, we have to we have to find out a system where I it makes it you practical. The solution. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the idea is actually really... Uh, but, I mean, I want to, to go, go back to Nathan because uh, Jules Holland... That was the last gig we did at Porgy, yeah, before the Corona crisis. And Jules Holland, that was really interesting because the point was he he was already in Vienna, and the thing was, you know, it was it was not clear if the concert really can happen, yeah, because on this day it was mentioned that it's only allowed for 100 people, yeah, that was just for one day, yeah, and and, and the day before it was Fred Wesley, and we had 300 people, and the next day it was Jules Holland, and we sold out the concert. It was like 400 people, you know. And 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 he was in town, and then you know, then we said, okay, well, what should we do? Yeah, and then uh, you know, I just asked him, okay, are you willing to do two sets, yeah, or like two concerts? Yeah, because otherwise we cannot handle it. Yeah, because otherwise I have to cancel it actually. And and he said, you know, cool, I will do two concerts. Yeah, and and we we just switched the audience, what we normally don't do at all, and it was a difficult kind of thing. But I prepared did Jules it. because he was before in Zurich and we didn't know if we had to reduce. So he was prepared to do two shows. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, so. But finally, we didn't have to, but we did a live stream yeah. because like 100 people didn't come, yeah, yeah. even they bought a ticket. By the way, the yeah, live yeah, stream also. was a solution. <laughs> So, us, Nathan, like, uh, yeah, sorry. Nathan, if I could, if I, if I could come to you though, because if if we're going to have a future with more streaming, and maybe this live and streaming, what what are the implications in how that's filmed? Will artists have to change the, the way they perform? Obviously, in jazz, the great thing is improvisation. How do you capture that on the camera? So, so I can um, tell you my Nathan, experience. Which we have my, here, Nathan, Nathan, oh, Nathan oh, and Mercury. Okay, Nathan. Okay. I think it's um, it's really interesting because if you think of the likes of the the mobile phone and how camera technology has changed over the last ten years, it's basically influenced how film is is made. So the the real question is, if we're looking at some kind of Napster moment for live events, what could be the implications? Because people are connecting, they're socially connecting with each other, not in new ways, but in ways in which they've already been familiar with. But then there's been this layer of camera technology and live streaming that's kind of been you know layered over the top of that. So there are jazz musicians who might come out of the woodwork that people didn't know about who become known for live streaming and their live stream performances. But those artists aren't necessarily the artists that might be known already for other things for the, their careers over the last 10 or 20 years. So I think what we, we might start to see is this emergence of, of new influences, of new talent that's coming into this, this medium where you maybe need to be a little bit more technologically savvy or maybe a little bit more savvy around marketing. And um, that could start to you know, transform um, the idea of what it's like to, to improvise because you're playing to a, a different audience. Um, or you're playing to an audience that you, you can't see the whites of the eyes of. So the question becomes, you know, what type of feedback loops can the artist get so that they know their performance is, is working? And um, technology is gonna you know, incrementally solve those, those types of problems. But when we look at just, you know, helicopter view on the, the entire situation, what we do see is that the creative internet or um, broadcasting content on the internet of five or 10 years from now has just been pulled so much closer. 
and that starts to mean that we have the likes of virtual reality and Apple Glass, which is going to come into the mix. And the whole notion of time and distance is going to change a little bit as we start to get access more and more of those technologies. But the audiences that are going to adopt that immersive technology might not be the same audience that's in Christoph's club. Yeah. So there's going to okay. be this. The future Sorry. has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just earlier than everybody expected. <laughs> Corinne, you wanted to say? Yeah, I would say that there's a big difference. We have to make a big difference between normal concerts with with audience uh, broadcasted and the, the home situation or just when the artist is just performing with uh, online community. Because uh, I think when people want to want to watch a broadcast from a live concert. They want to feel it's live. They don't want a musician looking in the camera like on the TV. They want to experience the live thing. They want to see the audience. They want to feel the energy which is in the venue. You have to bring the sound of the venue. You have to bring the hall. It doesn't have to look like a studio or a TV. It has to smell, you know? So it has to be like in the, in the, in the club, I'm sure. But now that we did live uh, streamings without audience, it's super difficult for the musician and you have to rethink everything because people are not clapping at the end of a tune. Uh, you have to look somewhere, you have to talk to the people, you, you have to change your content a little bit uh, that it interests and that, yeah. And also if you do it on social media, especially, you have to bring more content, but it's also a chance to, to really communicate, to have a feedback uh, different than clapping. But it's two very different things. And I'm sure that now musicians experience a lot of things. Some succeeded, some not. And those, I think, who succeeded are those who really created a direct exchange with their audience. And they probably are conscious now that they don't need intermediates anymore to, to, to keep this touch and to bring them to the shows finally, because finally we all want to do live, to see live music. I, I, I think we need to get Ellen's re response to this. So there's more things you have to learn. Yeah. I mean, I think I think you put a lot of work into doing your festival. How do you feel after you've heard all of that? All of that input. Uh, how do I feel as a musician? What do you mean? How do I feel? What What do you feel is ahead of you? Do you think you need to learn more about technology? Do you need to do more? Do you need to do more marketing? Is it is it something yeah. that scares you a little or or you find exciting? No, I think that there's a lot, but I think we, we will have to look at the core of it. You have the post core of it, then you will have, you have things like the weather. I will not look at live streams or when there's nice weather outside, you know, but as a musician, I think that uh, it's nice to play. Uh, you always think, okay, play before of uh, many people, but now the Corvid is there, and what what Christoph says that hundred people are really enthusiastic. That I can I can ima I can imagine too that you can playing for uh, smaller groups of people maybe will be become really nice again. Maybe we will will we will get and that with the elements of technology to it. So you have this really nice, cozy things you can imagine. I, I am imagining like a little little um, concerts outside. This summer, I think there will be pop-ups everywhere where people will play the music, 50 people. And then when you get this extra element of technology into it, streaming. And then I think when you play for uh, like 50 people, you're playing for the people. Eh? That's something else that's playing for like uh, the, the, the camera only. And I think that's from musician to musician. One 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 type will like it, and the other, and the other one not. <laughs> so I think it's one musician will love it. One musician will love to play at home solo, but the other one will say, "No, I don't like it. I just want to play with my band, and I just want to play as as I me, for example. I'm like a musician who likes to play with the other musicians. I love my musicians. I love to play yeah. together. That's my thing. But you have other musicians who are nice, really nice solo. So I think. We will have to watch the future, but I think like this little concerts where you feel the mu the people and then you get tech on it. I think this combination could work. To so it's going to be yeah. So it's going to be a combination of very local and then almost very global. Yeah, Karim. Yeah, Karim, you wanted to say. Yeah, I think now I think more than ever, more than ever, we want first to be close because of the distance we are. Yeah. No screen anymore in France real things 
and see musicians interacting together and with us. And I think it's a chance for small, I would say it's a chance for small, uh, small venues or clubs like we are because uh, the open air stuff and people playing uh, things we already know and being a little thing uh, away from the stage, I think this can make a break. But I'm sure that people are, are hungry to experience again, again, what a musician is improvising together, being close to them, feeling the same thing. And I think it's a chance also for new music and for improvised music. I have the, I have this feeling, but maybe it's just a dream, but let's see. And also an intimate place and experience the live music. Christoph, is there any, I, I'm, I'm sure you want to come in there, but I also want to ask a question, which is, is there any fun doing all of this stuff? I mean, I'm sure you didn't come into running a jazz pub to, to, to have six cameras no, and is, do all that, that technology. Is there any enjoyment or is it just, this is the way it is? No, it's a, it's a lot of joy and a lot of fun. And you know, it's an old joke. Uh, what is the best? What is the best way to uh, get a, to be a millionaire? To start a chess club as a billionaire. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> and you know that's what. It, but the thing is actually, you know, I really like what I'm doing, and I like the musician, and I like the audience, and I like the club, and I like this kind of, you know, that's that's my life, yeah? and and I think the the people recognize that yeah and uh, the audience also the musicians so it's it's you know that's what we are doing and 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 we are doing we get support from the city we get support from the from the state which is not that much but you know at least it's 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 you know the people recognize it's important to you know to support such things and and which was not the same let's say it was not this kind of, of thinking like 30 years ago. And, you know, I I, I never did anything else. You know, I, I, I started as a, as a, I was 15 when I started as a working stage guy at the festival in Salfelden because I couldn't afford the tickets. And for oh. me, it was like, you know, and for me, it was <laughs> like a, a protest against my parents or things like that. Yeah. Exactly and the, the and, and Salfelden, and you know, and Salfelden is, is a small, I mean, meanwhile, it's a town, but before it was a village. Yeah, and the people they were totally against that. Yeah, and and look, and you know, the thing is actually, we do what we are doing because we really believe in that, and we think it's necessary to uh, realize such things, and it's necessary. I mean, of course, also the big stages. It's it's fine. That's good for us. It's it's okay. Yeah, but we want a chess club, and we want a perfect stage for chess and for this kind of music and for improvised music. Yeah, we don't want. You okay. know, it's it, we it's it's fine. We we are we 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 have also we Pog and Bass is called chess and music club, and that's not ironically meant. Yeah, it's it's really it's like chess is in the center, and and music. You know, it's what what happens around. Chess is in the center, and that's what we are doing. That's a great uh, final thought, because we are coming towards the end now. I just wonder if anyone wants to chip anything in. I, I see, Nathan, you writing things down, so I think you've probably got a couple of <laughs> points you want to make there before we leave. Yeah, just a few closing thoughts. One was that um, acquiring a digital audience is cheaper now than ever before. And um, to acquire a digital audience, I think, is a little bit like an insurance policy for the future. And um, it, it's worth uh, musicians keeping that in mind. And I've also noted down uh, something called The Revenge of Analog, which was the name of a book. And um, it's a few years old now, but I think one of the, the bounce backs from this whole lockdown situation and all the disruption that we're seeing is going to be that people do want to be face to face. They want to be more connected and it's going to be something fierce when it happens. And um, with that also comes the the disruption in the economy that we've seen and people's jobs are going to change the way in which people make their lives is going to change um the amount of disposable income that they have in their pockets is going to change so i think it makes sense to think about those things now just so that musicians can kind of um adapt um some of their thinking now um so that they can future proof you know what they're going to go through in the coming years um i don't like to be the prophet of doom and gloom but it does seem like um there's going to be much more disruption and it doesn't necessarily 
mean that you know COVID nineteen is the end of this entire um, little phase and, and era or decade that we're in. I think the economic damage that's been done is going to you know ripple through subsequent years, and it makes sense for people to to be mindful of that and to, to try and get ahead of it. Yeah, but though out of difficulty also comes some good things. I'm sure <laughs> to try and give a positive note at the end. Is there any thirty second um, final thought that anybody wants to? conclude with before I bring this very interesting there's conversation. Yes, Corinne. There is a question, a question in the chat. Yes. Ah, yes. Uh, I think the audience has to do the biggest learning. <laughs> oh, okay. We've got to do some learning to sit, uh, to sit in front of screens. Um, so uh, with good speakers and good headphones. So yeah, I think that's us, we've, we've got to, me, I see myself as an audience, we've got to do the work. So are you asking us, us, the audience, to do that, Karine? I don't know. We cannot educate people. And it's the same for how to listen to live music. It's the same situation, I think. But, uh, yeah, I have to tell a lot of people because sometimes they complain about sound and I, I just see the listening with an apple. Uh, yeah, but uh, you want a better sound, change your change your headphones, change your <laughs> your computer, listen. There are super equipment now. You can have a super, more than ever, you can have super boxes. Um, our partner, I can't mention it, or can I do sponsoring? Sennheiser has well, super I'm, on everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I, I have to reply. I, I mean, of course, I, of course, you can change your audience. I mean, you have to yeah. educate your audience. That's no. the most important. No, of course. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to you stop you to, you have to here create them. Yeah. I am going to stop here because it could be this is a <laughs> long discussion. And also, I feel as an audience <laughs> member, I now have to make a big investment, and that's a money investment at a time when I don't have lots of money. But anyway, that's. For the future, this is a discussion that will go on and on. I want to say thank you very much, Christoph, Helen, Karin, and Nathan. It's been a really great discussion. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and I just have to close by um, saying that there's uh, another webinar on uh, Thursday, the 4th of June, EGN webinar on Thursday, the 4th of June at uh, European uh, summertime, Central European summertime. It will be 5 p.m. And uh, it, the, the uh, topic is, a house is not a home. Will closed borders mean closed minds? Will closed borders mean less possibility to travel, to lead? Will it lead to new nationalization and isolation? And are we becoming more local rather than more international? Uh, there are four panelists, which I probably don't have to go time to go through now. They're all on the website. And uh, I just want to say, Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you to everyone who is watching and to the EJN staff who are Batista, Francesca and Stefano. Thank you very much from us and goodbye. Ciao. Ciao. The future has arrived.